Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to troubleshoot a Honda GX series engine or a Honda clone that won't start. If you need tools or parts, I have links in the video description below to all the tools in this video and possible replacement parts. So let's get to work, I'll remove the air filter first so I can spray the starter fluid. Remove the air filter cover and remove the air filter. Now I'll turn the fuel valve on, put the choke on, Open the throttle, turn the kill switch to on, and make sure the oil level is at the high mark. If the oil is too low, it will prevent the engine from starting. I'm spraying the starter fluid directly into the air intake now. The spray evaporates fast, so don't wait too long after spraying it. I'll try it with a choke in the middle. So the starter fluid isn't helping at all here, that means that there's something else wrong with this engine. If your engine started and it's running good, then the air filter was likely completely clogged. It's very rare, but sometimes the air filter gets so clogged that the engine can't even start. Try it with the air filter on again and see if it will still start. If the spray helped and the engine attempted to start, that means that there's a fuel delivery problem. It's possible that the carburetor is clogged and needs a cleaning, or the fuel filter in the gas tank could also be clogged. If the gas was left in the fuel tank for a long period, it could have also caused water to build up in the fuel system, which would also prevent the engine from starting. So the first thing I would do, if the spray helped, is to clean the carburetor, and then I would drain and clean the fuel system if the carburetor cleaning didn't help. My engine didn't give any signs of life though, so that means something else is wrong with it. It's either an electrical or a mechanical problem. So now I'm going to check for a spark with the spark plug tester. This end goes into the spark plug boot, and this end fits over the spark plug. The light in the tester should flash when I pull the cord. If the coil is not producing electricity, then the light will not flash. I'll pull out the spark plug boot, and insert the tester in the boot. Connect the other end to the spark plug. Now I'll pull the start cord and we'll see if it lights up. It should flash a few times on each pull. Alright, so the tester is not lighting up at all. I have it connected to my trimmer now just to show you what it should have looked like. If the light didn't light up, that means there's a problem with the ignition coil, the low oil system, the on off switch, or the spark plug. If it did light up, the most likely problem is a mechanical issue, such as low compression or worn out broken internal parts. So before I test the electrical system to see why I'm not getting any spark, I'll take a look at the spark plug first, and then I'll do a quick compression test. I'm using a 13 16 spark plug socket to remove the spark plug. And visually, it looks pretty good, so I'm gonna give it a quick test with my voltmeter. I'll set the voltmeter to the 20 kilo ohm setting. Connect one end of the voltmeter to the top of the spark plug. And touch the other end to the tip of the plug. Make sure to scratch off the carbon buildup. I'm using the voltmeter lead to scratch it off. So I got 11.7 kilo ohms, which is not too bad. For resistor type plugs like this one, a reading between 5 and 15k is good. And for non resistor plugs, a reading between 0 and 5k is good. The letter R on the spark plug will indicate that it's a resistor type, but there are resistor spark plugs that don't have the letter R on them. There's one more test to do. I'm going to touch the body of the spark plug with the other lead. And if there's a reading of 0 here, it means that the spark plug is broken internally and has a short circuit, but I have no reading here, which is good. The recommended spark plug for this engine is NGK BPR6ES, this one came with my GX200 engine and it measured 5 kilo ohms, which is basically like new. So the spark plug tested okay, let's check the compression now. Compression testing on this engine is not very accurate because it has a compression release mechanism for easy starting, but I should still get around 40 psi to indicate that the engine is holding some compression. I'll screw the compression gauge in the spark plug hole now and then we're gonna do the compression test. And now pull the start cord a few times until the reading on the gauge doesn't go up any higher. 
So the needle went up just below the 50 mark, which looks like around 40 psi, which I know is normal for this GX200 clone. I did the compression test on the Honda GX200 engine as well, and I got around 45 psi, which is very similar to the clone. So since I have no spark, I'm gonna check the electrical system now, but before I do the tests, I'll quickly explain how the system works. The role of the primary ignition coil wire, shown at the top here, is to turn off the engine, so when this wire is grounded, the ignition coil stops producing electricity, and the engine can't run because there is no spark. So when the kill switch is set to off, or the oil level is too low, this wire becomes grounded, resulting in no spark. The low oil switch and oil alert sensor work together to ground this wire, in case the oil level is too low. So to do my tests, I'll start by disconnecting the primary wire first. If it's difficult to separate, you can use a pair of pliers. I'll connect the negative lead to the body of the engine, and if you don't have a clip like this, just press the lead to the metal of the engine. Set the voltmeter to 200 ohms, and touch the other leads to the primary ignition wire. I'm getting 1.3 ohms. Now I'll touch the lead to the engine body, and I'm getting 0 0.5, so I'll have to subtract this to get the actual reading. So 1.3 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.8. A normal reading on the primary wire is 0 0.8 to 1 ohm, so I have a good reading. If you're getting something like 0 here, there's definitely something wrong. It's likely that the wire is touching the body of the engine somewhere. So I'm going to test the secondary coil now. I'm going to set the voltmeter to 200 kilo ohms, pull the spark plug boot, and push the lead inside the boot. And the resistance on the secondary wire is 12 kilo ohms. To compare the clone with the Honda, here is the GX200 reading, and this one measures 20 kilo ohms exactly. A reading between 5 and 25k is pretty reasonable, but if the reading you're getting is far from this range, it's likely that there's a problem with the coil. I'll test the kill switch now. To do this, I have to disconnect the low oil alert sensor first. Now I can test the switch. I'll connect the voltmeter to the switch wire, and set the meter to 200M. And I have no ground here, which is normal when the switch is on. Now I'll turn it off. And it's grounded, which is good because that would turn off the engine. Try it again. And it looks good. I'll reconnect the switch to the ignition coil now. Make sure to keep this connected, otherwise there will be no way to turn off the engine in case it starts. I'll do one last test here to make sure the low oil float switch is working properly, and I'm going to disconnect the wire first. Now I'll check resistance with the voltmeter at 200M, and it's not grounded, which is good, that means there's enough oil. If it's grounded and the voltmeter reads around zero, that means the oil level is too low, or the sensor is faulty, and that would explain why the coil is not producing any electricity. So I'm pretty sure that there's something wrong with the ignition coil. I'm going to go ahead and inspect it now. The coil is behind the front engine cover, which is held down by these four bolts. Once the bolts are removed, lift the cover up and to the right, and be careful because there are wires attached on the right side. Wow, okay, so here's the problem. There was a mouse living here. He chewed up both ignition coil wires, so when I pulled the cord, the primary wire was probably touching the flywheel, and it was getting grounded. So I'm installing a new coil now, and then I'll try to start it again. I'll have the full video showing how to change the coil linked up in the cards. I have the new coil in, so now let's see if the engine starts. Alright, so the engine finally started, but it's idle surging when the choke is closed, which means that the carburetor is likely clogged a bit. So I'll do a carburetor cleaning, and then try it again. I'll have the full video showing how to clean the carburetor linked up in the cards. So I have the carburetor cleaning done. Let's start it up one more time and see how it runs.
All right, so that's running pretty good. The carburetor cleaning has fixed the idle search problem and the engine is running pretty good. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped you figure out what's wrong with your engine. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll be posting more repair videos in the future. Thanks for watching.